Welcome to my master's final year project presentation on deep learning on human brain surfaces. Brain surface analysis helps predict long-term neurological disorders in neonates, such as ADHD and cerebral palsy. This is especially useful for preterms who have lower chances of survival. Variations in cortical features along the brain surface have been shown to be potential indicators for early brain development and growth, especially in neonates. Key surface analysis tasks include postmenstrual age prediction, also known as Scanning's prediction, sex classification, and preterm classification. There are several challenges faced uh, when trying to model and analyze brain surfaces. First, it's difficult to capture the fine geometric details in the surface that arise due to the presence of sulca and gyri. In addition, traditional CNNs don't work well on surfaces due to their complex topology. Extracted surfaces can have topological errors, such as holes and handles, and they can also have excessively inflated regions due to bugs in the extraction pipeline. Lastly, neonatal surfaces grow at a rapid rate, and there are rapid variations in cortical features. Our first contribution is in the development and quantitative evaluation of geometric deep learning models for postmenstrual age prediction, surface segmentation, sex classification, and preterm classification. We develop geometric deep learning models that build on those proposed by Vesalius et al. We first evaluate novel adaptations of local feature aggregation from the Ranlinet paper, as well as adaptive sampling and point local and uh, non local cells from the Point Isnel paper with this vanilla Point Net plus plus architecture. We also evaluate variants of the graph convolution network model with novel convolutional pooling techniques. Lastly, we evaluate the integration of uh, 3D CNN features with uh, the GCN model and just to see if this can improve the losses. Another contribution is in feature importance for scanage regression models. The objective of this is to visualize patterns in the regions of the brain surface that contribute the most to the scanage prediction. We also develop a quality control method for pile surfaces. There are several different representations for cortical surfaces. The major ones are point, graph, and voxel-based representations. The simplest one is the voxel-based one. And uh, in this, the surface is represented as a regular 3D grid of voxels, where a voxel is like a 3D pixel or a cube. Surface analysis methods, uh, which have been developed in recent years using geometric deep learning, don't work well on voxel representations. The main reason is that it's difficult to capture the fine geometric details due to the large memory requirements. Unfortunately, surfaces are often represented at a, a resolution that is too low to capture these details. Point and graph-based representations better capture the geometric variations. The surfaces in our dataset have been extracted from T2-weighted 3D MRI scans. So here you can see a zoomed in view of an axial 3D MRI scan showing the individual voxels. And here is a point cloud representation of a brain surface where each node in the brain surface is mapped to a point. And the problem here is that there's no geometric connectivity information due to the absence of edges. The brain surface dataset consists of surfaces and local cortical features that have been extracted using the DHCP pipeline. There are also global features, uh, which include the scan age and birth age of the neonate. Here you can see one white matter surface with three different local cortical features overlaid. The surface segmentation has been done uh, by the DHCP pipeline for both white matter surfaces and pile surfaces. And in total, there are 40 unique segmentation regions, which have been extracted using the draw expectation maximization method. Due to downsampling of the surfaces, wherein the resolution is reduced, several surfaces have either missing regions or very small regions. The annotation shown on this slide will come in handy when we discuss our qualitative results for feature importance. We now present uh, methods for cortical surface analysis, as well as a summary of the quantitative results. Here's a simple GCN architecture that has been proposed by Vasilis et al which consists of two graph convolution layers, as well as ReLU activation, and a final fully connected layer that outputs the scan age prediction. We extend this by introducing the dynamic edge convolution 
proposed by Wang et al. in the Dynamic Graph CNN paper. This exploits local geometry around nodes by creating a k-nearest neighbors graph. We also do several architecture variations, for example, varying the number of graph convolution is, and we do hyperparameter tuning of the GCN regression model by random search, tuning hyperparameters like the learning rate. In addition, we introduce standard pooling layers, such as max and average pooling, as well as more novel ones like global attention pooling. We find that introducing dynamic edge convolution results in a loss that's significantly lower than the vanilla GCN. So in this architecture diagram, you can see how we introduce the dynamic edge convolution blocks in the GCN segmentation network. They have been introduced between the graph convolution layers, and there's also a k-nearest neighbors operation before each one. In order to process point clouds, two state-of-the-art models are PointNet and PointNet++. PointNet does hierarchical feature learning and learns point embeddings. It's also robust to the sampling density of points and is permutation invariant, which is its main selling point. PointNet++ builds on this. However, instead of processing individual points, it tries to overcome the lack of geometric connectivity information issued by processing local neighborhoods of points. It consists of set abstraction layers, which uh, in turn consists of sampling, grouping, and point net layers. Sampling layers introduce a novel sampling technique called farthest point sampling, which in contrast to the random sampling of CNN results in a better coverage of points. And it also lowers the time and space complexity of the model. This architect diagram shows point net plus plus, and you can see the set abstraction layers here. And it's been applied to the segmentation and classification tasks. We enhance the PointNet++ architecture by introducing first local feature aggregation units from RandomNet that were originally designed for large-scale point cloud uh, uh, tasks. And its main advantage is that it preserves complex local geometric features over neighborhoods. LFA consists of two key steps, local spatial encoding and attentive pooling. In this architecture diagram, you can see how we introduce local spatial encoding and tentative pooling blocks with the standard PointNet++ architecture that's on the right. We also introduce adaptive sampling and point local and point non-local cells from the point A cell paper in the PointNet++ architecture. Adaptive sampling makes the network robust to noise and the point local, point non-local cells simultaneously extract uh, local and global features and make the network robust to varying point density. For segmentation, local feature aggregation results in a test accuracy that's higher than vanilla PointNet++ at around 75%. And for regression, LFA actually results in a loss that's lower than vanilla PointNet++ at around 1.28 weeks mean absolute error. The sex classification accuracy for vanilla PointNet++ is quite low at around 50%. And this is due to an issue where in each training iteration, almost all surfaces predicted the same sex. We tried to overcome this by various methods, including applying dynamic graph CNN, introducing global features like the weight at birth of the neonate, as well as hyperparameter tuning. However, we can't find any improvement. Lastly, we integrate graph convolution layers from GCN with the 3D convolution layers from 3D CNN for scanning regression. And we hypothesize that the losses should be lower than the benchmark 3D CNN due to the additional rich features extracted by the graph convolution layers from the surface. So in this architecture diagram, you can see the resulting architecture with a graph convolution network pathway with graph convolution layers as well as a 3D CNN pathway with 3D convolution layers, batch norm, and value. We now present our methods and qualitative results for feature importance. Descriptive nodes are assigned either a saliency score and importance score, which is a measure of uh, the contribution of the node to the scanning prediction. We first develop a cross activation mapping method, which has been proposed by Zio et al., and we apply it to the GCN regression model. The weights of the final fully connected layer in the GCN are multiplied with the feature maps extracted by the graph convolution layers on a per channel basis to produce the activation maps. The values in these activation maps are called saliency scores. In addition, 
uh, population level saliency maps are computing computed using the method proposed uh, in the Auslan et al paper. The GCN CAMAS method is evaluated on six randomly chosen brain surfaces. And the population saliency maps method is evaluated on the full test set. We also develop a points dropping algorithm wherein all points in the segmentation region are dropped and we iterate over each segmentation region. In this method, we compute the importance score for each region and all points within a particular region are assigned the same score. This score is the absolute difference between the original and residual losses. And the original loss is for the initial point cloud without any regions being dropped. And the residual loss is for the point cloud remaining after the segmentation region is dropped. The higher the importance score, the higher the contribution of the region to the Scandi's prediction. So here we can see a, a visualization of a white matter surface uh, showing the saliency scores obtained using the GCN CAMS method. What's interesting to note is that the tips of the temporal lobes uh, have a high contribution to the age prediction. And the more red it is here, the higher the saliency score. Lower regions of the parietal lobe, as well as regions of the frontal lobe near the temporal lobe, have a high contribution as well. Another interesting observation is that the gyri along the longitudinal fissure have a high contribution, which makes sense intuitively as brains grow outwards fastest around this area. Saliency scores are also symmetrically located, located across both hemispheres. We also develop a quality control method for pile surfaces. And although pile surfaces are topologically correct, they sometimes have excessively inflated regions. We use an age difference threshold method for G the GCN regression model to detect such surfaces. And you can see uh, the surface here, which has been detected by a method, and it has an inflated region here in the frontal lobe. The, the left hemisphere is enlarged compared to the right one. To predict inflated regions, uh, we use the GCN CAMS method. So the idea is that uh, inflated regions should have a relatively high saliency score, ideally the highest. And you can see here that this inflated region has quite a high saliency score, but it's not quite uh, as high as, as the front of the frontal lobe. So our method does achieve some success in predicting inflated regions. To conclude for Scanny's prediction, the best model is steep vanilla GCN with four graph convolution layers. However, we see that introducing local feature aggregation results in losses that are lower than vanilla point net plus plus. In addition, integrating graph convolution layers with 3D convolution layers results in losses that are lower than the benchmark 3D CNN. For segmentation, the best model is vanilla point net plus plus. However, we see that introducing dynamic edge convolution improves segmentation results compared to vanilla GCN. The poor results for sex classification could be uh, down to the surfaces themselves, not providing enough information to distinguish the sex, rather than problems with the point net plus plus model. Another reason for this could be the lack of uh, geometric connectivity information uh, in point clouds. A feature importance work highlights that parts of the frontal lobe uh, temporal lobes, as well as the lower regions of the parietal lobe, have a high contribution to age prediction. And these results agree to some extent with biomedical papers. There are several exciting avenues for re future work. First, surface analysis. Uh, a new pooling technique called learnable pooling can be investigated for GCN regression, and GCN classification models can be developed to see if they improve, improve sex classification accuracy. In addition, for surface extraction, mesh deformations and implicit surface representation from the reference papers uh, can be investigated.